So recently, Unreal Engine 5.1 Preview has been released. And in this preview, we are getting a lot of new features, but also improvements and fixes to existing features. And currently, you can download the 5.1 preview from the Epic Games launcher and test out the features and report on bugs. Since it is a preview, you shouldn't use it for actual production yet. So I'm currently in the Unreal Engine forums and in here, we have a link over here which will basically take us to the Unreal Engine 5.1 public roadmap. And basically, it kind of lists out all the main features that is going to come with Unreal Engine 5.1. So when it comes to the rendering side of things, we have improvements to the Lumen. We are going to have even better performance optimization for primarily obtaining that 60 FPS on consoles and various other improvements and additions in features. We have improvements to Nanite. We have a new programmable rasterization framework that should provide even more features such as two-sided foliage, pixel depth offset and wall position offset and more. And when it comes to path tracing improvements, we have addition of multi GPU rendering. This should significantly help in reducing render times. And we have also GPU light mass improvements. We have a new improved denoiser that works at low light levels and better performance and quality improvements. Niagara now supports ribbons on the GPU, including better UI and performance improvements. Strata materials, basically strata materials replaces the old shader models such as default lit and clear coat with a more modular and expressive framework that allows for creating even greater range of surface appearances. Then we have the automated PSO gathering, basically this aims to fix the stuttering and glitching issues that some people had faced especially in large projects in Unreal Engine 4. And we also have a very very welcome addition, a feature that a lot of Unreal developers have been asking for many years and now we finally have it as on-demand shader compilation. Basically, if you were to open an older project, you will no longer be hit by hundreds of thousands of shader compilations. And when it comes to world building, we have new data layer assets. Basically, data layers are now standalone assets and they can be shared across different worlds. And we have improvements to the hierarchical level of detail, large world coordinate support for world partition. Then we have actor editor context which will help in world partition specific workflows, source control improvements and game feature plugin support for world partition. And when it comes to developer iteration, we have virtual assets which is again very useful if you are working with a team. This will reduce the space required for the team members to store all these assets. And it will also make this syncing a lot faster because there is less data to now transfer between them. Then we have the new memory insights update which means better UI, improvements to performance and it will show more data compared to the past. And when it comes to character animation, we have refined workflows for animation authoring. So this time we have the highly requested feature that is constraints. We also have a much more improved procedural control recreation. We have animation retargeting for virtual production, character deformation improvements. So now we can create even more complex shapes and add muscles, skin sliding and such. We also have debugging tools for gameplay. Specifically, we have better debugging tools for animation this time. We have motion matching and we also have post warping. So when it comes to audio, we have the new audio parameter modulation. We have the audio gameplay volumes. We have a new wave editor tool which is very useful so you can now finally view the audio as waves and perform some simple editing in them. We also have additional nodes. More nodes is always nice for meta sounds. We have node connection visual feedback again very very useful for debugging. We have multi-channel audio output support. We have soundscape which is basically a new procedural ambient sound generator for you know, car sounds, birds, leaves rustling and such. And this can also handle and compose these procedural ambient sounds at large scales. And when it comes to platform, we have Unreal Editor support on native Apple Silicon. So those people that are using the M1 or the new M2 Apple Silicon will be able to use Unreal Editor natively instead of running it through Rosetta. We have better improvements to the mobile deferred renderer. And we have improved workflows for XR development. Most notably, we have better improvements for the OpenXR standard. 
and various other features for XR development. And when it comes to geometry tools, we have improvements to the UV editor. Most notably, it is the UDIM support. And we have geometry scripting improvements, which is again very useful. And it is very clear with this that Unreal is putting a lot of time in improving geometry scripting. And when it comes to pipeline, we have a lot of improvements. We have USD integration improvements. We have Datasmith exporter for 3ds Max, for SolidWorks, for Revit, and for SketchUp. And we also have the Datasmith SDK. We have interchange import pipeline. We have LIDAR improvements. You have the Material X import support, which is still experimental. We have CAD kernel. And when it comes to chaos physics, we have chaos cloth improvements. We have better cloth simulations. And we also have a new simulation parameter called air pressure, which can be used for creating all kinds of inflatable objects, pillows, puffy jackets, and such. And all of these are dynamic in nature, so you can dynamically interact with these. We also have a chaos character physics documentation and tutorials. And when it comes to cinematic and virtual production, we have a lot of features. Again, Unreal Engine is being used in more and more TV shows and such. So it's obvious that they're investing a lot in these. So we have this virtual camera enhancement, which is kind of very cool. And we have sequence enhancements. We have movie render queue enhancements. We have the take recorder enhancements and we have a new live link face importer and when it comes to framework we have blueprint improvements so now we have blueprint namespace which can help in better organization and categorization of blueprints we also have blueprint header preview which can help and guide users in nativizing their blueprint for performance reasons we have production ready smart objects and we also have production ready mass entity with better CPU performance and memory usage. We have the production ready state tree, which should soon be the Unreal Engine's new scalable and general purpose state machine. We have iris replication improvements, which is currently experimental. We have game framework updates. We have replication performance improvements. And when it finally comes to editor and UI systems, we have again, a lot of quality of life improvements. And when it comes to reference view, we have navigation improvements. In Outliner, we also have quality of life improvements. In Content Browser, we have better searching and filtering improvements. And we have the new curve table editor with the most important feature being the undo and redo support. And we have the Python type hinting, which should help in better autocomplete experiences in IDE and prevents bugs caused by dynamic typing. We have UMG extending widgets using named slots. We have UMG view model. We have localization pipeline automation improvements. And we also have light mixer panel. And yeah, that's most of the main features that is coming to Unreal Engine 5.1. Obviously there are more, but this is the main ones. Unreal will most likely release the full feature sets that is available in 5.1 later on when they officially release it. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching and see you later. Bye.